So welcome back to the next episode. What we're going to do this this time is how to modify your Boss Kjetronic metering head, how to enhance it. Um, fantastic system. If you see my videos before, I love Kjet. It works perfectly. Um, yes, it has limitations, but you know what doesn't these days. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you step by step how to modify yours, enhance it to get it working perfectly and a bit more fuel relevant to what engine you are like what um if you're two litre 16 valve you need some more fuel in it so i'll go through how we do that so what we're going to start with is system pressure and you believe system pressure has a huge effect on how much fuel comes out those injectors so this is my test bed we have a meter and idea of 16 valve um but to be honest eight valve volvo pours from they're all the same inside. I haven't found any cast iron version four cylinder that's any different inside. Um, so, but this is off a 16 valve just for purposes. Anyway, um, so this is balanced anyway, so it's putting out the same amount of fuel. Now, system pressure by the book should be 4.7 to 5.4 bar. Now, fuel pumps, 10 bar, easy. You know, my old 20 valve turbo was a 16 valve pump, you know, north of 300 brake. The 16 valve KJ pump, not a problem. So, as long as your pump's working, you ain't got no issue with whatever pressure you want to set this up. Um, my test pump is actually one of the, the remanufacturers you can get online for about 60 quid. Yes, it works, it gets the pressure. It takes, you're talking a couple of milliseconds, but it doesn't get the pressure quick enough than the Bosch one does, and it doesn't sustain it for a long period. Um, that's why it's perfect for testing with. So, 4.75.4 bar and book figure it should be 80 milliliters of fuel out of those per injector in 40 seconds so that's 120 milliliters a minute what it doesn't say is at what pressure should you be getting 120 milliliters of fuel out now 120 milliliters of fuel i'll go through sort of fuel calculations or injector sizing per brake horsepower roughly um, later on but at what point should we be getting that 120 milliliters a minute? So in the pressure relief valve, you have shims. Now this is a one mil shim. Taking it out, there's no shims in there, completely shimless. So a one mil shim should add 0.6 bar of pressure. You add shims, you gain pressure. You take shims away, you lose pressure. Um, and a half a mil shim is 0.3 bar, it should. So what we'll do, we'll stick this on full throttle test. Um, I'm just going to go over 30 seconds and double it. Um, you can do it different ways, or you can run it for a minute um, purely because this set runs on a battery system. Um, so I know the pump's got 12 and a half volts because even losing half a volt on the pump will that will change your system pressure. Um, so I just do 30 seconds and double it. So what we we'll do is get it on, see what pressure this is at now with no shim, and then see what comes out in 30 seconds. So that was at uh, five point, sorry, four point five five bar being so, but four point five bar. Now you know these aren't all even. Now this was tested with five bar pressure, and they're all even. That's why I balanced them. You're now dropping that pressure down. It's affecting the injector outputs because you want to get to guess why? The injectors only open at three point three bar. So if it requires 3.3 bar to open an injector, and you've only got 4.5 bar, take 3.3 or 4.5, theoretically that's all the pressure you've got that's going through the injector, which isn't much. So we'll do the largest one, because that's what we're after. Um, if those ones aren't open enough, that one is. We'll take that reading and then we'll use cylinder 3, or third one, throughout this test and to keep a a level playing field um, and you'll note the difference in those three when we put that shim back in how much difference it makes so what we got the measuring jug then the three twenty five twenty five millilitres that's fifty millilitres 
or 25, sorry, 50 cc's of fuel in one minute. That's terrible. Not even close to um, what the book says. But again, we're also below the pressure the book says. So what we'll do, we'll pop the shim back in. Just the, most of them come with a one mil shim from standard. So we'll put the one mil shim back in it. Um, test it again. Again, using our node number three and then see how much comes out after that. So how do we change the shim? So what you're going to be looking at in your vehicle is this bit here. Now, 16 mil. This on your car, if you haven't taken it for, is going to be very tight. This is only nipped up, so it should just pop it off. He said. Oh dear. That's only nipped up. So remember, fuel is going to come out of that. Camera zooms back in. So remember, fuel is going to come out of this when it's on your car. Um, the mixture of fuel, not fuel, but the chemical I use going through this is a mixture of cleaning chemical um, and something else, which is as close to us and get the same, what's the word, viscosity as petrol. And it also cleans and it's not flammable. So let's take that out. Let me want the plunger out. So there's no shim there. Now put the shim on. Don't forget your spring. So we've got our shim in place. Let's uh, run it up and see what we get out. What that there, standby go. So as you can see, we've got a hell of a lot more fuel coming out, which is probably looks about where you want it, really. And that was a difference of half a bar. This was at five point, peaking at 5.1, which is yeah, give or take 0.6 bar the shim. So without the shim, we're under the specified pressure. Now we're banging in the middle of the specified pressure. Boom, all the injectors open because again, we've got five bar, take 3.3 of that. You've got that extra half a bar or so that's opening the injectors. So let's see what we've got in number three. At number three, we have got 50. So 50 and 50 is for 100. So we've got 100 milliliters of fuel coming out. So we know that by adding the extra shim or the shim in there originally, we've got 5.1 bar and we are up. What are we up? We're up a lot. We were at so at 4.5 bar, we were at 50 cc's a minute. We've now got an extra 0.6 bar, give or take, and we're up to 100 cc's a minute. So we're still not at 120. So we've got the next shim in. So let's see what the pressure goes up to. I'm not going to run it now, we just so we can see the pressure. So that's 5.6 bar, so let's run that, 30 seconds, see what we get. So again, as you can see, that extra half bar of pressure, more pressure going through to the injector, and you can see clearly, we're a lot more even now as well. There's no adjusting yet, this is just system pressure. So number three, what we got? That is that's loads more. 50, 55, 60, 65. So 65 milliliters. So 65 and 65 is that's 130. So as we can see, just by system pressure, we've got a whole load more fuel. We've gone from 4.5 bar, which works out at 50 cc's a minute, not even close to stock. But again, we had no shim, so we were below stock um, pressure. So we added another shim. 
that took us to 5.1 bar and that yielded us 100 cc a minute so we're getting closer out of another shim that gave us 0.5 bar increase which took us to 130 cc a minute so we're at 5. Point, what were we 5.6 so 5.6 we've got 130 cc a minute remember i said the stock figures are 4.7 to 5.4 so if we knock that system down to 5.4 you're going to be very close to that 120 cc a minute so from that we can tell to get that 80 cc over 40 seconds or 120 milliliters cc's a minute we need to be at 5.4 bar the higher the pressure so what we're going to do now we're going to put another shim in and see how more fuel we can get out just just by doing the system pressure number so we've got another shim installed and let's see now what fuel pressure we're going up to So that extra shim was another mil shim, and that's taken us to close to 6.6 .6 bar. Now, you might think I'm taking the pressure too high, but these cast iron units were used on such like the Ferraris and the early Porsches. Now, as you look through all the figures um, and specifications of those early cars, some of the Porsches, meter and heads, were running north of 7 bar of fuel pressure. So there's a reason for that, more pressure, Again, take that 3.3 .3 bar opener pressure off, and the more you're coming out. So we're at 6.5, 6.6 now. Let's see what comes out now out of our number three. So that's our run done. Again, we're starting to go off one or three a little bit. This is where the next stage will come through when we start balancing it properly. So again, we'll go for our number three, seeing what you've got. Number three is at 75. So that run yielded us an extra 20 cc's a minute per injector. That's a lot of fuel. Um, and that was a sit that was nearly a bar difference of fuel. Um, now where we're getting to a limit now is how much pressure we can run physically into this one. And we're getting there about 6.6 .6 bar. Um, because it's jumped up that difference in a shim where a shim should take 0.6 we've jumped a bar but anyway you can see there from the difference of I'm looking down here because I've got it all written down going from a 4.5 bar at 50 cc's a minute then we're going to a 5.1 bar at 100 cc's a minute 5.6 bar 130 cc's a minute and then 6.6 .6 bar 150 cc's a minute so you can see then just from system pressure how much more fuel you can get in an engine. So like I say, if we took that 5.6 bar down to 5.4, which is the book figure, we're hitting about 120 cc a minute. But going off experience, most of the meter and heads I've tested stock um, at run about 5 bar. If you get one and just put it on, check the system pressure, relevant or flow, system pressure generally sits about 5 bar, um, which gives me the indication from factory generally they sit about 5 bar. Um, so 5 bar on these would be 100 cc's a minute, give or take. Um, to be fair, you probably find that from the factory, um, new. But that's then, this is now. So, for argument's sake, the 5.4 bar on book figures should yield you the 120 cc's a minute. Right, now we are up to 150 cc's a minute. So what's all these cc's a minute make? Now this is where things can get a little bit confusing. So when working out fuel injector calculators, Google it, there's loads you can use. Um, find the simplest one because some some sites way take it too far. So you want 16 valve golf, fuel at natural gas with engine four cylinders, um, PSI or your pressure. What they mean is the pressure upon the injector. So we use that system pressure because that's the pressure that's behind the injector. Um, and then theoretical break horsepower what you want and then it gives you what cc's a minute you need theoretically to produce that power so if we're looking here that our last run at 6.6 .6 bar which is 95 psi it would take um 150 cc's a minute that is theoretically um enough fuel to support 170 brake horsepower 140 brake cars 140 brake car stock 
and um, we've got an increase doesn't mean just sticking the fuel in is going to increase your car we're just giving you an idea of what system pressure can relate to and how much fuel you need um at our stock one um 5.6 bar is technically enough 155 um brake horsepower but we don't want to get too confused what we're going on about now so 6.6 .6 bar is a bit too high really uh, for prolonged use um, if it's a full-on track car maybe um but street car which is normally most cars we're talking about you want to be running mine runs 5.8 bar um and i've then tweaked the outputs to 195 milliliters a minute now ideally you want to drop the pressure a bit and then adjust the inject the outputs to give more volume it just takes that bit of pressure or stress away from the metering head and the pump because if you've got a pump whacking out trying to support 6.6 .6 bar it can do it but not all day long for weeks on end if you know what i mean um they're old cars if you've got an original pump mine's an original pump that's an original pump from the car bosch pump still cracks out that pressure all day long um so yeah that is showing you how just purely system pressure we can go from where were we 50 cc's a minute which is terrible to 150 cc's a minute what spars that 4.5 5.5 so 1.5 bar difference just on system pressure gives us 100 cc's a minute that's huge so that's the pressure side done now what we're going to focus on is balancing it um i've got a meter and head apart so in the next video i'll show you exactly what the springs do and why there isn't really a base setting for the meter and heads um i know i've waffled on a lot about um parameters and settings and specifics um as always i use e-manuals online um fantastic it's easy like so i have stuff written down the book i've got manuals over there that if i think oh, i'm pretty sure it's that double check the manual yeah it's all, it's all good um i'll drop some links in the description um and a discount code they've got anything you can think of with a manual they've got it um so thanks for watching click subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one where we'll do balancing at a more efficient rate